Trick or treat, everyone! What's on the Halloween menu today? Creepy Cocoa Bombs! Hi guys! Welcome to my spooky series! These creepy hot cocoa bombs include a spectacular assortment of Halloween characters and have an explosion of orange hot chocolate inside to make a magical potion for you to enjoy. And they are perfect to share with friends on a fall fright night of your favorite Halloween movies. So be sure to keep on watching! Coco the cat is our expert helper on making hot cocoa bombs and she says the number one essential you are going to need is a three part mold exactly like the name it includes three parts with a top layer silicone inserts as well as a bottom layer you can make more cocoa bombs much faster and the shape looks so clean inside and out compared to brushing the chocolate in the silicone molds Next, to get our chocolate melted, I microwave the first round for 30 seconds and give it a stir. Then continue in 10 second intervals until it is completely smooth and melted. Those 10 second intervals ensure your chocolate does not go above 90 degrees or will be in trouble and you risk white spots forming on top of the chocolate. Once it is mostly melted with some clumps, zap it for 2-3 to three seconds to finish with a fluid consistency. If you were wondering, these chocolate melts are the Merkin Super White. The original white is more of an ivory tone, so if you don't have the Super White, I recommend boosting the original with a white oil-based candy coloring so the color of Jack Skellington looks extra bright and on point. As for the orange color, I'm adding some color mill in the shade orange a few drops at a time and giving it a mix, mix, mix until I have reached my desired shade. Always do this in small amounts to prevent your chocolate from seizing. Once you have your vibrant pumpkin orange, I'm going to show you how to color your chocolate black using dark chocolate melt as the base mixed with Black Chef Master oil coloring, also dropping that in a little at a time. The goal is to continue mixing in more to eliminate the blackish brown color or any gray tones that you may see right before achieving the pure black. It does take quite a bit of product, so make sure you get the two ounce bottle and it will be black like Coco the cat. The last color we're mixing is the green by using green color mill with the same technique for a green potion of magic. Now let's go ahead and mold the chocolate. I start by removing the top layer and silicone inserts, putting them off to the side nearby. And you want to look for the fill line. It's hard to see on camera, but that's your guide for how much you need to fill each cavity of the mold. You don't have to worry if you overfill above the line. It is much better to be thorough and have extra chocolate than not enough. These molds really do all the work for you and are a one-step process. After you finish filling each cavity to the line, place the silicone inserts on the back of the top cover and press down all the way on the front and back to distribute the chocolate for the most perfect hot cocoa bombs. As I mentioned before, if you slightly overfill like I did here, whoops, with the orange chocolate, it doesn't matter, the excess will snap right off the edges later. Let's pop them in the fridge for just 15 minutes before removing them from the mold. And I don't want to scratch the chocolate bombs with my cat claws, so I like to wear gloves for a scratch-free removal. Keep in mind they are delicate and remember to handle with care. The top layer comes off first, then gently peel each insert away from the cavity and look at how shiny and glossy the finish on that chocolate is. That's what I call a hot chocolate bomb. I work my way around and peel in sections to release the chocolate from the silicone insert. As you can see, the edges are super clean as well as the inside, so you don't need to melt down much of the edges with your hot plate during assembly, which is the fun part. 
safely store your chocolate bombs on a flat surface and get ready to gather lots of marshmallows and your choice of hot cocoa mix. Of course it's Halloween, so I decided to use this super cool orange hot cocoa mix which I will be sure to link in the description box below if you want to try it out. And the same brand also makes a green version. They don't taste as chocolatey though, it has hints of vanilla in there which is something different if you like vanilla. When assembling the chocolate bombs, I place them inside of my handy dandy cupcake liners and microwave a small plate for about a minute or another option is an actual hot plate if you prefer that. And all you need to do is take your chocolate sphere and swirl it around the plate for a few seconds. Since the chocolate gets melty, my tips are to clean off your gloves in between handling each one and to use separate plates for the different colors to avoid color transfer. Also, try not to get the melted chocolate from your gloves on the surface of the chocolate bomb, otherwise it can appear smeared or dull. After I have those set up, I'm adding in our cocoa mix and mini marshmallows as much as I can fit as long as the chocolate bomb is able to close. They are looking good so far. To see the chocolate bombs closed, reheat your plates to melt the top portion of the sphere with the same method we use for the bottom half. It's almost decorating time and my favorite way to create the details is with a royal icing mix. It is very easy to make and only requires a third a cup of warm water as the other ingredient and beat that together for a few minutes until stiff peaks form. Coco loves decorating with royal icing instead of chocolate since the chocolate drives more bumpy and you have much more control with fine details. This is the same idea as decorating sugar cookies. Here I divided up the royal icing into thirds and I'm dyeing them brown, red, and black with gel based food coloring for the most vibrant result. To create the pumpkin design, I'm piping the brown icing on with a tip number two by outlining triangles and filling them in with zigzags to add a cute textured look and finishing with the curly zigzag for his mouth. Now let's make him some more friends. For the spider web, I'm taking the black icing with a tip number three and piping a spiral, then making four lines up and down, an X, and side to side. If your icing sticks up, feel free to fix it with a toothpick and top it off with your curly spider sugar decoration. I saw this super cute cupcake decorating kit from Walmart and had to get it for the black cat design. And to stick them on, I'm brushing a small amount of melted chocolate as the glue. Since the ears and whiskers are a bit heavy, melted chocolate worked much better than using royal icing for this part. To secure the pieces to the chocolate bomb, hold them down for at least 15 to 20 seconds before letting go. Go back in with your brush to apply beads of chocolate when adding her eyes and nose. Then for the whiskers, I'm arranging them on an angle. They are made of a black licorice and are very bendable. Her whiskers are a bit long so they need to be trimmed. And there we have Coco the Cat. Guys, I think you know who this is. I drew Jack's face on with an edible marker and traced over the lines with a tip number two. For his eyes, I drew a teardrop shape and two slits for the nose, then a curved smile with short lines for the stitching. The icing makes his features more 3D to pop out more, and also the edible marker doesn't write too well on the chocolate since it has a waxy surface about it, so bring him to life with that royal icing. He is Jack the Pumpkin King after all. Next, for Mr. Frankenstein, I'm attaching these eyeball sugar decorations on with a dot of melted chocolate and piping his squiggly mouth and scar with a tip number two. Tip number two creates those thin and clean lines we are looking for. My favorite part by far is using the grass tip, which is number 233, to pipe around the crown of his head for a nice head of hair to complete his whole look. 
Last but not least for the eyeball cocoa bomb, I have black and green fondant that I cut out with a one inch circle cutter to make a green iris and half of an inch circle for the black pupil. And after I put those pieces together, it is ready to go in the center with a thin layer of corn syrup. My inspiration for the red vein pattern was actually from my eyeballs, salt and pepper shakers. I really liked how realistic it looks, so let's use that as a guide. To pipe the red icing, I'm alternating the squiggle lines with a tip number two, branching some and leaving others on their own. I hope you had fun making these Halloween hot cocoa bombs with me and you enjoy your own at home on a cozy night in. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next spooky video.